Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 17th of June 2023. We're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 16th of June. Though last week was quite potentially pivotal for precious metal prices, we found in fact the result was somewhat a damp squib. Why? Well, let's take a look. Okay, before we look at what happened last week, a quick reminder and a request. We've set up a second channel entitled Finances Do Matter. We've placed a link in the description box and the comment section below. In just under six months, we now have over 5,000 subscribers, more than 100 videos, and we will very shortly be conducting interviews. So if you're one of those listening to this channel and you've not subscribed to Finances Do Matter, we most appreciate it if you would either go to the description section or our comment section where you will find that link, click on it and hopefully subscribe. Now going back to what happened last week and what we expect to happen this coming week, gold fell just $3 last week, falling from $1,961 to $1,958. Having hit a high of $1,971 and a low of $1,926, a fall of just 0.1% and really quite uneventful considering what happened last week. More on that in a moment. In sterling terms, gold finished the week at £1,528, that's down £32, and in euros it closed at €1,792, that's down €34. Euros. Silver fell 8 cents, falling from $24.29 to $24.21, having been as high as 24.71 and as low as 23.24, a fall of 0.3%. Interestingly, of course, if you look at the low there, it did actually dip quite a bit last week, but recovered quite handsomely. In sterling terms, silver closed at £18.90, that's down 43 pence, and in euros it closed at €22.17, Euros. that's down 0.45 euros. The gold to silver ratio rose slightly from 80.7 to 1 to 80.8 to 1, broadly unmoved really. The difference between gold's high and low was just $45 and the difference between silver's high and low was $1.47. Now this is what we said concerning our forecast last week. We expect gold to trade between 1930 and 2070, which it did comfortably but towards the lower end of that scale. And we forecast silver to trade between $23.25 to $26, which it also did, but again towards the lower end of the scale. We did not see the inflation figures that perhaps we had hoped would have happened, whereby inflation would have come down much lower and we could have seen much higher gold and silver prices. Once again, the US economy disappointed us. Looking at other financials, Bitcoin currently stands at $26,351, up $637 on the week, though we suspect it may blip up a little more this weekend because of what's been happening towards the end of last week. Equities were also higher. The Dow Jones closed at 34,299. That's up 423 points. The S&P is up 111 at 4,409. And the Nasdaq is up 430 points at 13,689. The Nasdaq seems to have done quite well in recent weeks. For those in the UK, we're now quoting the FTSE index and it closed on Friday at 7,642. That's up 80 points on the week. Oils were higher with Brent crude closing up $1.82 at $76.61. That's per barrel. And WTI crude closed at 71.78. That's up $1.61. The dollar index stands at 102.24, and that's down 1.31 points on the week. In terms of economic data announcements last week, of course, the most important was the fact that the Fed kept interest rates on pause last Wednesday, after a modest decline in core CPI year over year announced on Tuesday, a low enough figure of 5.3% year on year to prevent rates rising in June but July and or September 
may prove to be a different matter. Retail sales for May came in stronger than anticipated at plus 0.3% against expectations of minus 0.2%. Industrial production for May fell into negative territory, minus 0.2%, while consumer sentiment for June came in higher than expectations at 63.9% compared with 60.8%. Also last week, jobless claims were up again compared with expectations, and next week markets will be watching that figure quite closely, if only because there's not much data being announced next week of great interest. We do, though, have flash PMIs on Friday, but most attention really will be on Jerome Powell giving testimony to the House Committee on Wednesday and the Senate Committee on Thursday. If we look at gold and silver a little more closely, gold markets remained range-bound, and it looks that traders will have to wait until next week, and in my opinion, a couple of weeks to see any significant moves. The difficulty I have is that Jerome Powell missed an opportunity by not raising rates last week. Inflation is still stubbornly high, and if the US is not careful, it could find itself having to raise rates later in the year by more than expected and more frequently, by not being even tighter today. Jerome Powell himself suggested there could be two further rate rises before the end of the year of about a quarter percent each. Now, we stated a year ago, and you can look back on our videos then, that to deal with 10% inflation, the Fed funds rate needs to be at 5.5%. In other words, 5.5 to 5.75, because they, they use that spread. Plus, credit tightening. On its own, in, in, interest rate rises would not be enough. If they had moved to that level sooner, because they're going to get there by the end of the year more than likely, but if they had done it sooner, Inflation would now be close to the Fed's target, perhaps not necessarily at 2%, but certainly would not be at 5 But they've drawn it out and continue to do so. Now, one suspects the reason for that, frankly, is that it's easier and more acceptable to adopt gradual increases rather than strong, bitter medicine in one go. Some analysts, therefore, are saying there are now only three outcomes to the US, persistently stubborn inflation, stagflation or recession. And a number are saying this will be extremely bullish for commodities. Well, it certainly does appear that it was for natural gas, because last week it rose, or the European benchmark rose by more than 50% on Thursday. We didn't quite see that in precious metals, though. Now, gold is characterized at the moment as being in a consolidation phase, and the 100-day EMA is an important support level. For the next week or so, analysts are uncertain about which direction gold will move. It could dip to as low as the 200-day EMA, around 1894 that's $1,894, though it could rise to a strong resistance level of 1985 It's currently standing at 1958 though most agree that gold is in an uptrend. Silver, since the end of May, has performed better than gold. Not performed wonderfully well, but performed better in percentage terms. But we, prior to that, it's performed worse. Some analysts are trying to make big of this performance. I've seen a few comments. But with rates still likely to rise and the global economy being in doubt, we suspect silver could still be under pressure, even compared with gold for the next few months. Once we start, though, to come out of recession and global GDP picks up and inflation seems to be combated, then another story more in favour of silver will unfold. Nevertheless, long term, we're still of the opinion both gold and silver have much further to rise, but it's all about timing. With this little data expected next week, and providing there is no major geopolitical hurdle or announcement, we're not really expecting great excitement in the precious metals marketplace, especially as we didn't have that much excitement last week when there was a lot of data. We therefore expect gold to trade somewhere between $1,900 and $2,000 with 1875 being our outlier low and 2025 our outlier high. We forecast silver broadly to trade within a $2 bracket of between 2325 and 2525, though we suspect it will more than likely be somewhere in the middle, with 2250 as an outlier low and 26 as an outlier high. We're not really expecting it to get to that upper quartile, really. What do you think? Please do share your thoughts. Before we go, just a reminder, 
our Finances Do Matter channel, link below. And we'd appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up, you subscribe and press the bell sign and let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Meanwhile, we hope you have a wonderful weekend, a safe weekend and a prosperous week ahead.